Hey guys, okay, so I just wanted to make a sort of quick video just explaining uh, putting Bobcat 7 pin, the newer style attachments, onto non Bobcat equipment. So, for example, this is just a Wacker WL32, but it has the 14 pin connector there. Um, so, as many of you may know or have found with, WAC, with uh, Bobcat, they have this 7 pin system. Um, so all their attachments actually have a little computer. This one would have been bolted right there where those bolts are. And I'll just talk about that right now. Okay guys, so here's that box I'm talking about. So this is the cover that goes right on the back of the Bobcat snowblower and any other Bobcat brand attachment with the seven pin. So you take that off and basically this is the little computer decoder type thing. So this is your seven pin Bobcat um, connector that connects to your to your actual machine with the seven pin connector and then goes through the wire there and then goes into this connector here and this one here this one's just 12 volt power this goes into the computer it's all a sealed unit you can't get into this thing uh, it goes into the computer and basically all this computer does is it takes the computer signal from the seven pin from your machine and converts it and then sends it out through these wires as 12 volt signals to operate the solenoids. So for for the uh, snowblower here, you have four. So you have shoot left, shoot right, and uh, shoot up, shoot down. So there's four different leads on here. Um, depending on how you connect these, it, de it it'll depend on you know what does what uh, based on your uh, your hand movements in the cab. But when I took these off, I just labeled them. Uh, so they actually put these colored. Uh, zip ties on at the factory. It must be just so they know how to install it onto the snowblower properly. But when I took them off, I just labeled them here. So we've got bottom left solenoid is the blue tie wrap. Uh, bottom right solenoid is the white tie wrap. Uh, top right solenoid is the black. And red is the top left solenoid. So if you guys need that, if for whatever reason you disconnect it, and you need to know which one goes where. That's that. Uh, you can actually use this. Uh, so let's say you have a Bobcat machine and you need to operate a non-Bobcat attachment. Uh, you can use this to operate that attachment because this is basically the computer. So you can plug this into your seven pin and then you can plug these into the solenoids of any non-Bobcat attachment if you need to do that. So that's something just to keep in mind. Oh, one other thing I just wanted to touch on, uh, these connectors here, in case anyone's wondering, they're Delphi PA66 connectors. They're a very common style of automotive connector. They're watertight. And this is what the solenoids on a lot of attachments um, use. So the attachment obviously would have the female side and this is the male plug. Uh, your attachment may be different, but uh, these ones are very popular. You can get them on Amazon. They're like a knockoff type. Very easy to you know buy, install, connect. They're just basically sliding connectors in there. Easy to figure out. Or you can just cut the wire right here and you can just hardwire your harness uh, onto that, whichever is easier. So I had to put this uh, blower onto this Wacker Nusen. Uh, again, it has the standard um, skid steer uh, electronics, 14 pin. Um, but if any of you are just wondering how the solenoids work on this machine, so this machine, because it has four function, has four solenoids. So it's going to be hard to show you all of them, um, but basically there's one, let's see if I can get it. So this is the, where is it here? Top left, that's the top right one. And then below that would be a bottom left and a bottom right one. So uh, just if, so if you are wiring this, these are 12 volt solenoids. So if you apply a ground and a 12 volt power to each of these solenoids, it'll be a different function on the snowblower. So shoot up, shoot down, shoot left, shoot right. Uh, the so what do we got here? I got it written down for you guys. Uh, so the top left solenoid here where the pink wire goes, that would be um, shoot right. The one below that, the bottom left one is shoot left. Uh, the one with the green wire going to it right there, uh, the top right solenoid, uh, that would be shoot down and the one below it is shoot up. So if you guys are trying to figure out what the wiring is on that, that's what it is. Um, and then if you stick around for the rest of this video, uh, basically I'm just going to be talking about um, how to make one of these connectors here to go from a standard uh, skid steer 14 pin 
to pretty much any attachment that has 12 volt, volt solenoids. Um, so on the Wacker, what you've got here is you've just got, uh, what is there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. Uh, six out of the seven pins are used, one is not, and I believe, yeah, pin G doesn't do anything on the Wacker Newson WL32. Um, but I'll just plug that back in and I'll just explain to you quickly what the pins on this machine actually do. So let's step into the cab here. Okay, so in the cab, you so basically this machine has four functions. So pin G on the 14 pin connector does nothing. Uh, so your ground is uh, always pin B. So on your, on your 14 pin connector outside there, pin B is your ground. And then your four functions are basically up, down, so that's two functions there. And then when you press this button, this switches what this can do, and then there's a third and a fourth function. Uh, so the way it's wired, um, and the way I've got the snowblower wired, is like this. So when you don't have this on, you just have this on basically, it's, it's called zero mode. When you scroll up, I've got the chute going to the left, which is pin E. It, it energizes with 12 volts pin E when I go like that. Um, pin F is chute right. When you go like that, it energizes pin F with 12 volts. So that was the uh, one of the ones I showed you down there on the blower. Then when you activate the I here, or the one, which is your next functions, uh, pressing up is shoot up, which uh, activates pin D and then down activates pin C. And then the last pin on there is pin J out on the, in the, on the boom. And when you put, press this uh, number two here, it basically sends 12 volts always to that pin. So let's say you want some lights on your blower or lights on an attachment or, I don't know, just something that's running 12 volt. And for anyone, that you, any of you that wanna know, it's 20 amp. So it's on a 20 amp fuse, um, if you're looking to, if you're wondering like how much it can take. Uh, the functions, the four functions, they're on a 15 amp fuse. So each function would have 15 amps uh, with it. Um, so another thing too, is you're probably wondering, well, if I, how do you get one of these connectors? So these connectors are super easy to make. Um, so this is a Deutsch 14 pin connector. Uh, very, you know, uh, easy to come by. Lots of different companies sell them, but they're made by Deutsch. Uh, I will go here in a second and show you the part number for this, but basically whatever machine you have, you can customize this, uh, this female plug uh, to fit your pin setup on yours. So basically all this is, you could, this whole plug setup here is one part number. You can buy the pins and you can even buy the tool to extract the pins. There's lots of videos online about that. And then depending on how many functions you have, you just buy this um, basically extension cord wire. And this comes in various different formats. So right here you can see I've got seven conductor 18 AWG wire. So you could go with like uh, five conductor uh, or four or three or whatever number of conductors you need to provide your ground and then however many functions you want for your attachment. Okay, so there's that connector right there. And I mean, a, a company called Skid Steer Genius makes the whole connector if you want, you can buy. It's like a $250 uh, dollar part, but I mean, it's worth it. There's a, there's a bit of wiring involved and if you don't wanna mess around, you can just do it, go that way. But I mean, this uh, part right here in Canada, I mean, this is American price here, 52 bucks you can get it for. Very easily, um, you know, obtained. So that's the part number right there, that's the, socket plug whatever you want to call it you need to go with your you know whatever wire you're going to use however many connectors this will handle up to 14 pins that's why it's called a 14 pin connector and that's the part number right there hd 36 18 14 sn 059 and basically you purchase this and you purchase the pins that go with it so uh, I'm just trying to make this as, as non-complicated as possible, but basically if we go through this part number here, it, it essentially tells you what this connector does and what the size of pins and, and things like that it needs. So uh, it's an HD36, that's just the series of this connector made by Deutsch. Uh, 18 is the body size, so if we go over to here, 
This is actually a layout of all the different connectors they make. The one we want, the important one, is right here. It's a 14 pin, basically, skid steer connector. It's body size 18, it has 14 uh, terminals, and it's size 16. So when you're looking for pins for this, you're looking for size 16 pins. I'll get back to the pins in a second. Um, oh, and right here, this is what I just talked about in the cab of the wheel loader. So there's some really good information you want. That's what the buttons do. So you can just pause that there if you'd like, and it just tells you what all the buttons do in a Wacker WL32. Um, so yeah, so the HD30 here, this is basically how your part numbers work. So this is the series, like I said, HD36. Um, it's a, uh, where is it here? Uh, so we have a 36, so we have a plug. Shell size 18 is ours, because it's 18 there. Uh, so configuration 14. So we have a 14 pin. This part number just happens to be a, a 21, but we have a 14 pin. And it's a socket. And normal position wire seals. That's what you're always gonna wanna go with. And then 059 at the end there is cable clamp slash adapter. So that's the nice thing. You actually get all of this. Because if you buy the one with just 072, you only get this here with just threads and you have to buy this separately. So it just makes sense to buy this as one piece. Um, so I just hope that didn't confuse people, but if you're wondering where the part numbers come from and what they mean, that's what they mean. So let's get back to the pins quickly. So you're gonna wanna purchase this. Oh, okay, so this, okay, so keep this in mind uh, while we're just here. This is the tool to remove the pins and move them into different positions um, in the plug. So you're gonna buy the size 16 tool, the things that are like two bucks. Yeah, two bucks. Um, okay, so this is one option you have for pins. These are solid, so size 16, and you basically put the wire in here and then you crimp that with a special crimping tool. You can buy the crimping tool on Amazon. I'll actually show you mine right now quick. So this is the tool right here, and you can see right on it says uh, for size 16 at the bottom there, contact 16. So basically you put your wire in the hole there, Put it through this hole right here and crimp it down and those little fingers come in and, and squeeze it down in four different spots. Super handy. So that's one option you have for the connectors. The other option is if you don't have the tool and you don't want to buy the tool, and I, I mean, again, we don't recommend this, but it's fine. You can buy a strip of the connectors here and you can see they have the little fold over clips. So you can put your wire in there and then, you know, one way or another, you should use the tool. Like you can buy this kit on Amazon, it has the tool and it just crimps that wire down and basically your wire is now on to these uh, little connectors. Um, there's videos on how to take these pins out, but essentially what you do is you unscrew this part right here from the back and pull it down and you'll see all the wires going up into the back. You use that little tool I showed you and you sort of slide it around the wire and push it up in. And what that does is it goes around the wire and around that terminal and pushes a little pin out of the way and then it just allows you to slide that wire and pin right out and put it into whatever position you like and then when you push it back in you just push it in until it clicks and it's flush with the face of this connector here and you're good to go so I actually have one of the pins here so if you can see it has a little little shoulder on it right there that little shoulder is what grabs the, the clip or whatever you want to call it and holds it into the into the plug. Um, let me just pull it out here to show you guys. So you can see right there I've got them all they're almost flush with the face but that's the position they need to be in. And the nice thing about this this has all the letters on it this has all the letters on it so if you just follow the lettering um, you should have no problems. So I hope this helped uh, a lot of people out. If you have more questions there's a lot more to all this so if you have any questions about it uh, just feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.